couple of things that come to my mind. One is what Burke mentioned, and that is um, the second great command that Jesus gives, to love our neighbor as ourself. And we as uh, shepherds in our church have been trying to think through decisions in a way that reflects that priority for the members of our church so that we as a church are reflecting that uh, in this critical time. That um, it is not just about our own safety and security or priorities or comfort or whatever you would add to that list. That there is a love of neighbor that motivates us, that is tied very closely to our love for God. I also, and I said it at the end of the talk I gave earlier, think it's um, important for the saints to live with hope. When you ask the question about suffering, I didn't get the chance to answer, and I'm, I'm almost glad I didn't because it, it was, they had much better answers than I gave. But when you asked what came to my mind, were scriptures, James 1, 1 Peter 1, Romans 5, that bids us to rejoice. God is sovereign. His providential care is at work in the worst of circumstances. No, I don't say rejoice in any frivolous way that doesn't take seriously the gravity of the circumstances, but there is a hope that is untouched by the affairs of the world. And there is, there is some gospel power in the saints reflecting Jeremiah, who is sitting amid ruin and despair and declaring the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. And his compassions never come to an end. You know, I, I, don't, think, I don't think it counts if you sing Great Is Thy Faithfulness at graduation and celebrations and anniversaries, anybody can sing of them. But it is during times of crisis and calamity. It is during times of sorrow and suffering. That's when you really mean it, when you don't know what's about to happen next. The, the pressures of life are weighing down and you, you are clinging to the faithfulness of God. So I, I do believe, as Sinclair said earlier, this is a time for us to live out the gospel we proclaim and that we profess. Uh, being good and godly neighbors and wherever God has planted and placed us and living with the hope of our risen Savior uh, are two things that come to my mind. I just think are critical during these days. <clears throat> Chris, I was thinking when you were quoting Luther, um, you know, how often I have heartily sung the verse, and were, were this world with viruses filled and threatening to undo us. And, you know, we've, we've sung that so often, and this is a time wh which presses us to believe that these things are true and to live them out. And my observation is we've, all, we, we've got different resources in order to serve the people around us. We've got different gifts in doing that. You know, there are some people who know exactly what to do, and then there are the people like me who say, is there anything I can do? Um, uh, and we need to help one another in that. But it seems to me the absolutely fundamental thing is who we are in what we do. Um, that, that, oddly enough, there are all these verses in the New Testament about Christians having peace because they have a God of peace. Um, and I think it's those things that, in terms of the impact of Christian witness, will most tell that we that we that inwardly we are on our knees before them, and they know that we proclaim Christ as Lord, but we're saying we are your servants for Jesus' sake, and that it begins to make sense to them when they see the connectedness between the gospel that we may have spoken to them and the dispositions that we now have, that we live in trust in the Lord. Yeah, we have our anxieties, but we're able to cast those anxieties on the Lord. Um, that we have our needs, but that there is, the gospel has given us poise and peace 
Um, and that's not something that we put on. We don't flick on the light in order to be lights to the world. We are the light of the world. We have peace with God. And I think we must have confidence in the Spirit's ministry to use what God has done in our lives to speak through the service that we render to the people who are round about us, especially those who are most anxious. Living out what we believe in the gospel, and as you said, Dr. Ferguson, that means living with a certain peace. Uh, this is a time, I think, for Christians to um, really show forth the calm that we can have, um, that, we, that we take proper precautions, but we don't overreact, that we are able to live out truly the fruit of the Spirit um, with a calmness and a steadfastness. Um, I know that there are many, many people who think that many people are making too much about all this. And then there are others who think that people aren't making uh, enough about it. They're not doing enough or saying enough. And that has been one of the most difficult things in striving to serve people well and teach people and uh, shepherd people through this because you have people at different ends of the spectrum and all throughout it. Even among us here today, I'm sure there are people who are very worried and people who are not worried much at all. And I think this is a time that I think uh, all of us, particularly uh, mothers and fathers and grandparents, um, where the devil is going to try to divide homes and try to bring division and try to bring um, uh, just unnecessary disagreements in the home and in marriages, uh, in the church, this is a time for us to really strive to serve one another well as we strive to lead where we can in helping people to show grace to each other, to show a tremendous amount of freedom. That's, that's we, we've been meeting this week as a staff uh, at the church and talking about how we really want to strive always, not just during this time, but always to uh, give grace and freedom and help people wherever we can. But just one last thing, Chris. Um, I do, talk to a, I do talk with a number of people who, who they're, sim, they're simply asking the question, when are we going to be through this? When are, when are we going to be done with this? When is this crisis going to be over? When are the markets going to come back? When is the economy going to begin to come back? And uh, the answer to that is, of course, none of us really knows completely. But too often, we are treating this trial like we treat our own trials in life, where we're just trying to get through them and sort of muscle our way through them, when often the purpose of trials and the purpose of difficulties and hardships in our lives, the purpose of suffering is not just to muscle our way through them and to get through them by grinding our teeth, saying, we're going we're gonna to get through it. It's to humble ourselves, as Dr. Ferguson was saying, it's a time to, it's time to investigate our own hearts and ask the Lord to examine us and know our ways. It's a time for us to stop and pause and see if there's any wicked way in us. It's a time for us to really focus our lives on the Lord and to take our theology seriously.